Cashflow Diary Podcast, Episode 241. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, welcome back. Glad that you guys are here. We are going to continue the series, Eight Things to Give Up. For those of you who may have missed some of the earlier ones, uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of how this started. It was um, basically there's a there was a post on Facebook and it just says eight things to give up. And every time I've posted it, it gets lots of interaction because I think we want to really give these things up. And I figured, hey, maybe if I share some ideas, strategies, and ways to combat these things, it'll help all of us go out there, not only give them up, but also make some new progress in some new areas that we may not have considered ourselves to be able to make before. So what are the eight things? The eight things are doubting yourself, negative thinking, fear of failure, criticizing others, negative self-talk, procrastination, fear of success, and number eight, people pleasing. So we've already talked about doubting yourself, negative thinking, fear of failure, criticizing others, and negative self-talk. So I feel like I should delay this episode to another day. No, <laughs> you knew something like that was coming. Yes, that's right. We're going to be talking about procrastination this particular time. You know, uh, before we talk about it, though, have you, do you, you know, quick little real estate trivia, like what is the largest nation in the world? I'll give you a second to think about it because this is important to understand. What is the largest nation in the world? All right. Some of you, you probably already figured it out and you also now know why I will not be giving up my day job. It is procrastination. That's right. That is the largest nation in the world. You're like, wow, Jay, that was really, really horrible. I know. <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's start with the definition procrastination. It's simply the act or habit of putting off or delaying especially something requiring immediate attention. You know, it's the I'll do that laters, or I don't need to make a decision nows that get in the way. Here's something that I, I truly think about. I mean, it's not like I, I've never procrastinated. So it's something I do have some experience in. And in fact, if you've ever you know, studied for a test. I'm guessing you waited till that same last moment uh, in any way, shape or, you know, form, or if you had one of those, you know, projects due in school or even, you know, just, I mean, we can always find a way to procrastinate, right? I mean, you know, I can always figure out a way to do it later. No need to do it. Why do it now? I can do it later. <laughs> it sounds so much better, right? Well, here's something that I've learned. I know is is true for me, and it gives me a way to begin to ask better questions so that I could possibly get to a solution. What do I mean? Uh, I mean, I, I, I learned a long time ago that when we're afraid, when I'm afraid, when you're afraid, when a human being is afraid, any excuse will do, and we will often take the ones that our friends will justify the easiest. It's very simple in that sense. But what does that break down to? Well, I, I fear disguises itself in many different evil little forms. It's a fear disguise. Fear is in disguise. And it, it it's like it disguises itself so it can go undetected. It's like a colorless, odorless gas leak in your house that silently kills you from the inside. You know, suddenly some of you are thinking maybe I need to get the 
the furnace checked or <laughs> I want to check for gas leaks. But the the point is, is you, you don't see it. You don't smell it. You don't even think you're doing it. And, and then all of a sudden you're just like, ah, where did the time go? You know, and it's like I said, it's the largest nation in the world. Now, a, an, an interesting thing, I think, about procrastination is often when you're out there or when I'm out there or, you know, in the marketplace or just thinking about the stuff that I want to get done, I often can't see past my points of procrastination. For example, if I'm in the middle of, you know, I know that I've got to work on, you know, raising some capital, right? So we're still in the middle of putting some final touches on one of our commercial buildings. Well, I can't see past the procrastination of picking up the phone, right? Sometimes I, I can't see the next step because I'm procrastinating on the step that is in front of me. It's like my mind is somehow blocked. What's the next step? And I don't know if you're like that, but I can tell you one thing that's definitely an incentive to get rid of it is so that you can see the next step. You've heard me say before, I say again, go as far as you can see. And when you get there, you'll see further. Well, guess what? You never get there if you keep procrastinating. Why is it called procrastinating anyway? Because I think that's interesting in the sense that I'm not for it. <laughs> I'm not procrastination. I'm anti-crastination, if there is such a word, right? That would make more sense. I want to be in the anti-crastination camp. So uh, just think about it. When, when we're afraid, any excuse will do. Now, look, you can have many reasons. And yeah, I don't know you. I don't know your situation and all this other stuff. And, and maybe you don't know mine. Go listen to episode number one. It might give you some insight. But we all have reasons. But there can be no excuse. Not today. Not for you. Not any longer. You can have all your reasons, but no excuse. Get to work. That's why you're listening today. You're listening today because you're hoping that maybe there's something that you'll be able to learn, and I think there will be, that will help you uh, turn in your citizenship card, and you will no longer be a card-carrying holder of, you won't have that passport to the land of procrastination any longer. You will no longer be a citizen, and that's cool. Interestingly, though, sometimes the, 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 the question occurred to me while I was putting this together, I was like, why do we procrastinate? I mean, like, what, what's the goal? What are we trying to achieve when we do that? And I find this interesting that uh, obviously I'm not the only one who has ever asked this particular question. And again, our good old friends over at Psychology Today, uh, they have nine different reasons for procrastinations. And some of them use, you know, like, psychology words, and I'm just going to, you know, talk about it in English and give you some things that when I was, I'm like, oh, okay, I know what that is. Well, here's what I do to be able to, to not have to deal with that or be able to overcome that. Because over time, you know you, you get to know you so well that you're like, ah, here I am, I'm doing that again. And you maybe you'll develop a technique or two, and I think I'll be able to share something uh, that will help you evict yourself from the largest nation in the world. So um, the, the first reason that they mentioned was you toss what they call self-compassion to the wind. I ended up rewording that as you're just too hard on yourself because what happens is they're saying that, uh, you know, uh, you, you feel more stressed during tasks, meaning you, you don't want to feel stressed. So, I won't do it now. <laughs> it's like, or it's like, man, you know, I, you didn't hit all the goals you wanted the last time you tried this. So there's no sense in trying now. I mean, you know, last time I studied for that test, it didn't quite work out. Last time I wrote that offer, you know, never mind the fact that I've never written an offer before, but it, I didn't get a yes. So, you know, um, no, no sense in hurrying or I've asked people to, to, you know, invest in deals before that. Eh, I'm not, you know, all of those things are, are things that can get in 
the way. I, I just think you're too hard on yourself. The probably the best thing there is just to to realize you are human, and it's taking you how many every years you are old to learn the habits, skill sets, and things that you currently know. You're not going to get this overnight. Uh, if you've ever taken a, a, a part of the four levels of learning, or you understand the four levels of learning, it will give you some time to allow your brain to learn and for you to grow so you can become the person that is capable of handling everything that you are currently going after. And, you know, uh, as you're growing, as we all do, it takes time. You know, you don't expect a, well, four-year-old to be able to do calculus, do you? You know, at least not yet. (laughs) Who knows where iPads will take them. The point is, it's okay. You're human. Another reason that we procrastinate, I thought this one was funny, is you learn to procrastinate from role models. That's right. We're going to blame mom and dad. I think psychologists always find a way to throw in the mom or dad, but it's probably very true. Or maybe there was that A student or some other student that you were like, man, I do all this studying. They get in here and they don't even study and then they make it through anyway. Or the person who just barely skates by and you're like, man, they got to go to the party and they still graduated. Great. And I did all this hard work and we're at the same place. This is awesome. And that can totally be a damper on your desire to get stuff done and be proactive and make it happen because, you know, nothing really bad necessarily happened to them. Well, the cool thing is, is, That's a learned behavior. And that which is learned can be unlearned and more importantly, replaced with something helpful. One of those things is it's actually, it talks about it in the book. um, It's the Anthony Robbins book, Awaken Giant Within. It talks about raising your standards. So your standard may have been, you know, mom, dad, siblings, friends, whoever was the procrastinator that you respected. Okay. Well, You can raise your standards. You can choose at any moment to begin to mimic and model someone who you believe to be less of a procrastinator or more importantly is closer to the end game that you desire. And I'm willing to bet that that person probably does procrastinate, but just significantly less so. Or they have systems in place that help them to stay productive, uh, even if it does result in some form of procrastination. So just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. Here's the thing. Find a role model and mimic. Don't copy, mimic. Sound like them, walk like them, talk like them. Learn how they respond. Learn how someone thinks. Hang out with them every chance you get. You're like, I I can't hang out with them. Okay, well, did they write a book? Buy it, read it. Did they write two? Read them both. Are they coming to a seminar? Well, guess what? You need to be there. Do they have a webinar? Watch it twice. Um, do, Do they have courses? Buy them. All of these things will help you learn to walk, talk, and act like the person or person you believe are closer to what you want. You want to mimic them. You want to sound like them. You want to be able to use their words, their inflections, their intonation over and over again. And as you pick up those habits, because that's really what we're talking about here, it becomes a habit after a while. But as you pick up those habits, you'll be replacing the one you don't want with something more that you do. So, Uh, Another reason uh, is that you don't think you'll be effective at the task. This is the proverbial issue all the time with younger real estate investors. Now, and I don't mean younger as in, you know, you're 19, 20, 21. I'm just mean you're new to the real estate business. I don't know how to do this. I've never done it. Okay, that's fine. Or I'm no good. That's not me. It shouldn't be you. That's why it's new. <laughs> you know, um, whatever you're doing now wasn't you before you were doing it either. And now it is. You got to go and understand, again, four levels of learning that is going to take some time 
to add new skills, you know, and you're going to have to learn to begin to identify with, in some cases, a, a new social group, especially as you go out there to become a real estate investor. It's a different social group. They read different stuff. We care about different things. We look at different blogs. We watch different channels on TV. <laughs> you know, uh, I I almost said we eat different food, but I don't know. I guess it depends. If you go to a lot of open houses, <laughs> you might <laughs> uh, very well absolutely eat uh, completely different foods. However, you got to give yourself the freedom to learn and understand that you're not going to know it all right now. And that's okay. Write this down. Every master was once a disaster. You've heard me say that before. And they adopted a mindset of, you know what? I'm just going to learn it one bit at a time. I'm not that good yet. I'll get good, but I'm getting better today. And we're going to go practice and make some improvement. And that's exactly what it's going to come to down to. You got to put yourself in this space where it's okay to experiment and find ways to, well, actually not do something. And that's okay. This is where you get the fail fast, fail forward, and fail frequently. Got another reason that is popular for procrastination is you just have a bias against that particular task. You know, it, you don't enjoy it. It didn't feel good. You know, this is the cleaning the bathroom, the planning. Uh, for, for me, oh my gosh, planning, budgeting, these are not things that I associate with joy and fun yet. <laughs> they, 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 I am learning definitely on the planning and the budgeting. It's been helpful as you go out there and do your advertising budgets and things of that nature. Uh, but what, you know, everybody knows, uh, I, and I think even the IRS gets the fact that we are procrastinators because guess what? If they didn't say you had to pay by April 15th or October, depending on, you know who I'm talking to, or September, depending on what your deadlines are, you know, did I extend in my corporation, all this other stuff. If they didn't set a date, would you ever get around to getting it done? And the answer is no. And in fact, even though you know the date's coming, we all know, you know right now, what date it's due, right? And we also know that on April 15th, on the news, there will be a story and stories across the nation of just how many people procrastinated to the absolute last minute. You know that's a news story every year. It's going to happen because <laughs> largest nation in the world. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Now, having a negative bias. Um, yeah. You know, why would you want to do it? You wouldn't. That's kind of normal. But recognize the negative bias for what it is. Your bias. That is based on partial some truth. Sure. But that doesn't it didn't kill you. That doesn't mean, especially when it's stuff that you absolutely have to do. For example, another one, especially for some of you who are becoming real estate investors, you know you should have made more sell, more, uh, more, more phone calls. You know you should have called that person back from the networking group. And you're like, ill. You want me to pick up the phone and call people? Yes, I do. And because you haven't, well, you haven't received the result you think yeah, uh, you you should or you want, and another week has gone by, and boom, you're like, no progress. This real estate thing ain't for me. No, you haven't done the work because you may have a bias against the phone. So learn to get comfortable with the phone. Sleep with the phone. Uh, have you know one of the things that made it really really helpful for me is to learn, especially when it comes to sales, is to learn a sales system. So that I could diagnose what didn't go right and learn to get better at it. It began to remove the bias and I had to learn to think differently about sales. Sales wasn't, you know, sleazy plaid jackets. It was sales equals service. If you don't allow me to sell you something, then I am forbidden from serving you. And, and it made it easier by changing my mindset in those ways. All right. 
So hopefully these techniques are helping. We've got a few more to go. Um, so now <laughs> what else gets you in the procrastination is, um, well, your internal clock, your estimation of, oh, I can do this or it won't take me that long, will it? Uh, the answer is yes, it will. <laughs> you know, we think it, you know, it, it's not going to take us that long or you, we think it's going to take forever. Either way, we, we're, we're, and we're wrong on both counts at both times. You know, there are tasks you're like, ah, how long could that really take to change the oil in the car? Never mind the fact you've never done it. Uh, I'll just go on YouTube real quick. It won't be that big of a deal. And then three days later, you're finally done. <laughs> or or the do-it-yourself project over the weekend, right? You're like, ah, psh, it's just a toilet. How difficult could it really be? And then you should have realized you just should have called the plumber to begin with. Or because you've done it so many times, or maybe you think you're familiar with it, or the skill set can't be that difficult. How, psh, it's not going to, well, I mean, it's going to take me 15 minutes. And then four hours later, the, you know, server crashes, the, 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 you know, software doesn't work. You got to do your updates or something. And you're like, man, that, that took me significantly longer than I thought. Well, here's the thing. The challenge is that you made an assumption, <laughs> right? Uh, so give yourself room for that assumption, and just know that you tend, we tend, I tend, all of us do this. You know, there are tasks that we're like, man, I'd really, it's just going to give yourself more time. And then a nice little treat for finishing early. How about that? Give yourself more time and a nice little treat for finishing early. In fact, I bet you it'll work with your kids, too. <laughs> See, now I'm helping you there. Now, uh, so another reason uh, procrastination can really snag up a ton of folk. This next one, I'm telling you, it, it's like everywhere. Is because, well, we we focus less on the gains of the future and more of the gains of the present. This is the... The, the, you know, I could do this now, but I could also sleep five more minutes. So why don't I do that? Or I could save money today, but this new device that I want, this new trip is, it's, it's on sale right now. So the, you know, hey, it, it's all about immediate gratification. Uh, and I get this a lot, especially if you are used to people breaking promises to you, you are probably in this camp because you're like, it's in front of me now. I can get it now. Let me go ahead and get it now because there's no it's not going to happen later because those types of things don't happen for me. And all I'm trying to say. Is that that's just not true and operating that way isn't going to help you because typically the things that we want, that we truly deeply want, are going to require some time, some some delayed gratification, some practice to actually be realized. You do realize that you can decide to be a real estate investor, but it still may take you four months, five months, six months, two years before you get that first perfect property that you're looking for. Even though you made a decision, because there are so many things that you have to go through and learn. And in addition to just locating the property, and this is true for any level experienced investor, just because you know what you're looking for now doesn't mean you're going to find it faster or doesn't mean it's going to be available when you're ready. However, you have to understand that, hey, I'm sacrificing today. And this is the key to understand the concept of sacrifice. Yes, it's you're giving something up, but you're giving up something you currently perceive to be good for something that you currently perceive to be better. And doesn't that feel great anyway? So 
sacrifice. All right, this next one, uh, like, totally plagues everybody. And many real estate people are here all day. Your perfectionism gets in the way. It has to be perfect, you say to yourself. Really? I don't think so. Here, write this down. Okay, stop what you're doing. Uh, you might be on the treadmill, I know. I understand. Pick up your phone, type this in your note. You're going to want to remember this one. Perfection paralyzes performance. Period. <laughs> Perfection paralyzes performance. Done is better than perfect. And this is where we get moved at the speed of instruction. I, I'm telling you, you will make more progress if you just get it out there, get something done, get a version, minimal viable product, lean startup. All of these things are subscribing to this idea of it doesn't, don't let it be perfect. Because, because here's the, the thing you think is perfect, many other people can find a flaw. And not only can they find a flaw, if they are going to be a customer, their jobs, for some reason, seems to be, let me find a flaw and tell you about it. And they will, and that's great, because now you're in the feedback loop. Since you're going to be in the feedback loop anyway, you might as well get the feedback loop before you put your blood, sweat, and tears into what you think is perfection and get emotionally attached to that. Especially when people find out that your baby ain't perfect and has warts, right? So get the MVP, minimal viable product out there. Get the offer written. It's not going to be perfect. And that's okay. Hopefully that makes sense. And another reason for procrastinating is, well, your depression, anxiety, they just cause you to delay, take action. I call this, you just, you really just don't feel like it. And I can understand that. Uh, I know for me, those feelings come from a lot of what am I focused on? What am I thinking about habitually and or consistently or maybe even in the last 10 minutes? And I've shared many state changers before and you've got to find a way to become more disciplined in your thinking and thinking habits. And if you can just be aware that you're going down this thinking path, oftentimes that's enough to go, okay, Stop. So one of the ones that I haven't shared before is I like to think of, and in this order, and this many things, I try to think of something that is true, something that is pure, noble, right, praiseworthy, admirable, excellent. So if you try to do those things or think of something that fits each one of those categories, something that is different, and then if you add on top of that, something you're grateful for, it often is enough for me to change my thinking, thus lifting my mood. And who knows, I'll feel a little better and maybe it's just enough to get me started because sometimes that's really all you have to do is overcome the inertia of sitting still and the perceived pleasure of doing nothing because, well, hey, sometimes doing nothing sounds great. I get it. All right, so then we're down to the one that uh, I, I think, well, if, if we haven't scooped you up by now, this one is going to do it. It's simply that discomfort leads you to disengage from this task, meaning you're like, you believe you should avoid discomfort. That's not comfortable for me. So I'm not going to go down that direction. Well, you're trying to do something new. It shouldn't be comfortable. It should feel foreign. You should feel almost like you're free falling. And you're like, that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid, Jay. <laughs> I'm like, well, I can't help you because you can't learn and look good at the same time. However, here is a a wonderful technique that has worked for me, especially when I'm dealing on those big projects that I there's no way I'm getting it done. And I'm just like, oh, I'm not done yet. I, that that is that is an uncomfortable situation for me. I like marking stuff off and being done. And when I can't do that, it gets frustrating. However, 
Um, you, you know, you ever notice that you can tolerate something in little doses? Well, that's the key is instead of going all in or none, you know, hey, I'm going to get it all done or I'm not doing it at all. Break it down into small little pieces. And again, use the Pomodoro technique. We've talked about this before. And I really like it because, hey, it's going to hurt for a little while. That's way more truthful to yourself. You know what? Hey, it's going to hurt for a little while. But then after I'm done with my first Pomodoro, say this 25 minutes. So after 25 minutes, it's going to hurt for a little while. But then I can get to play for a whole five minutes. And it'll be awesome because it'll feel like you earned it, especially when it's applied to a task that you don't necessarily enjoy. Well, here's the thing. You now know some common reasons for procrastination. I've done my best to give you some ideas on how you might recognize it, but more importantly, free yourself. Turn in that citizenship card. Learn to move at the speed of instruction. Go out there and get some offers written. It's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Until next time.